Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and in today's video we're going to talk about Maxwell's second equation and that's basically Gauss law for magnetic field. In the first equation we talked more about Gauss law for the electric field and in this case we're going to talk about the magnetic field. There are a few differences between the electric field and the magnetic field though they are very similar in concept there is still a subtle difference between I won't say subtle there's a there's a very different uh, physical um, phenomena that happens with between the magnetic field and the electric field so first let's focus on what the commonalities are between the two uh, fields the integral form involves flux of a field over a closed surface and in the magnetic field uh, magnetic domain it also involves a flux of uh, the magnetic field over the closed surface the differential form specifies divergence of the electric field when the magnetic field the differential form also specifies the divergence of a field showing what all uh, uh, at, a, at a particular instance whether the uh, or, or a particular time or, sp or in, in space whether the charge in, in the electric field is whether it's uh, moving away from the point or moving towards the point. Uh, the same thing in the magnetic field, we can see whether the vector is moving away or moving uh, inwards. So that's very common. But there are a few things that makes it a little different. One is in the electric field, you can have opposite electric charges and they can be isolated from one another. So you can have a positive electric charge uh, in one location and, the and an elect uh, negative electric charge in a completely different location. They don't have to always be together. But in the magnetic domain, Opposite magnetic poles always occur in pair. Any magnet you have will always have a north pole and a south pole. And that's a fundamental difference between the electric field and the magnetic field is that the magnetic field will always have positive and negative or north pole and south pole will always be a pole pair. Whereas an electric charge, you could have isolated positive or negative. And the non-isolation has a very different effect than the electric charges. And that's what this... Uh, uh, by understanding these fundamental differences, this is uh, important when we work on the equations. So, in the integral form, uh, we'll come back to this equation shortly where B is the magnetic flux. Um, then a mu zero, which is the permittivity of free space over 4 pi, is the current flowing through a small length of a wire that is a cross product of uh, the uh, normal vector divided by the distance at which you are trying to find the flux. So that's uh, an equation that we'll get to shortly, but let's focus on what the overarching main equation uh, that deals with the, um, with the surface area, so the integral form. So if you take a surface integral over a, surf, uh, over a closed surface, B, which is the magnetic field, which is in Tesla, and if you take the dot product of the normal, which is a unit vector normal to the surface and the area and incremental in the surface area, it will be zero. What does this basically imply? This basically means in a nutshell that all the fields that are going in, number of fields that are going inside the surface area within any surface area and the amount of field lines that are coming out of the surface area will always be exactly the same because the north and south pole always are in a pair and hence the resultant area will always be zero. So the flux or the magnetic flux that you find within an area, any it could be imaginary or it could be a real area, will always be zero because it will always have positive and negative flux coming inside and outside and it will cancel out each other. And so the total nets, the net flux will always be zero. Let's dive more into this equation. So similar concept as we had in the electric field, which is the force uh, per unit charge um, and the unit of electric field is Newton per coulomb. Uh, we have a very similar equation even for the magnetic field and this is given by Lorentz's equation where you have the force of the magnetic force is equals to the point charge Q, which is also there, uh, the same charge that we have in the electric field and uh, into or multiplied by the velocity, the particle velocity with respect to the magnetic field, cross product of the magnetic field. So this is a vector, the velocity, and 
P, which is a magnetic field, is the cross vector. We'll go more into detail about this equation. But when you do a cross product, that means A cross B, uh, it's equals to the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B multiplied by sine theta. What that means is that if A and B are parallel, that means sine theta will be zero degrees, then this whole equation is zero. So A cross B only works when sine theta is 90 degrees or perpendicular um, to uh, the to only when A and B is perpendicular, will you have the max maximum impact? So if it's parallel, it'll be um, uh, it'll be zero, and if it's perpendicular, it'll be 90 degrees. It'll be it'll be maximum. So nice sine 90 is one uh, is one. Or uh, so this is very different from the electric field where you had a dot b, which is a magnitude of a and magnitude of into the uh, multiplied by the magnitude of b multiplied by cos theta which means that for an electric field if the flux is in the direction of the electric field or is normal to the surface then you will have um, then then that means it's uh, always going to be uh, that'll be the maximum when if, when if it's pointing in the same direction whereas in the electric field it's the opposite so we'll talk a little bit more about why this is a, has a very significant implication as to how the physical phenomena of uh, the magnetic fields work. So similar to the electric field where you have force per charge, this is also very similar in the electric in the magnetic field where you have force per unit charge. The difference over here is that we have the speed and the velocity of the of the charge, as we mentioned over here, the velocity of the particle with respect to B, with respect to the magnetic field multiplied by sine theta. So the unit of the magnetic field B is newtons per coulomb per meters per second because you have meters per second and this is a newton which is the unit of force and coulomb. So the units is can be represented as newton per coulomb meters per second or it could be volt uh, into seconds by meter square or it could be newtons per um, current into meter um, or it could be nothing but uh, all of this basically represents Tesla. So the unit of a magnetic field is Tesla. They're different if you, you know, basically play around with uh, the combinations with how voltage and, and current and the area and the, and the speed all uh, and different shapes and different forms. And if you manipulate this equation, you'll get all these different units. But in a nutshell, we call them, it's, we call the unit of the magnetic field in Tesla. So B is uh, uh, the magnetic field and, uh, and it's also uh, referenced as magnetic induction or magnetic flux density. So they have, they are generally the way it's uh, rec it's uh, in many books you'll find out that B is the magnetic flux density. You'll come across this when you are dealing with uh, say designing motors and you want to find the, say the BH curve of um, the um, of a particular of a magnet or of the of the material that you're using uh, in in the motor. The BH curve is basically trying to say what is the relationship between the magnetic flux density and the magnetic flux intensity. <laughs> so that will be the H curve. So um, so this is uh, in, in, in many textbooks, uh, you'll find the word magnetic flux density, but it's nothing but the magnetic field. So they're all different names for the same phenomena. So let's go a little bit more into the differences between the electric field and the magnetic field now. So in the electric field is directly proportional to the electric force and in the magnetic field also the magnetic fold field is proportional to the magnetic force as we've seen over here. Now the difference where we talked about this cross product, how, how important it is, that the electric field is always parallel or anti-parallel uh, to the force. Whereas here you have the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the force. It's a fundamental difference. So B is equals to force upon Q as uh, as it said, it's B is equals to force upon Q multiplied by velocity multiplied by sine theta. But in terms of the approximation with basically saying that E is directly proportional to force upon Coulomb and which is in, in the electric field and even in the magnetic field, you have uh, force upon Coulomb. So that's very similar in terms of the electric field and magnetic field. Electric or electrostatic fields are procured by electric, uh, or sorry, are uh, produced by electric charges. Whereas 
here you also have two more things that are um, important that the that the, that the that the magnetic flux depends also on the speed and direction so the speed is v and the direction is sine theta so mod of v which is the magnitude of the velocity with respect to the magnetic flux multiplied by sine theta is 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 important to, to carry out and find out the magnetic field which means there is something that is changing in order for the magnetic field uh, to take uh, to come into effect so magnetic force is always perpendicular to velocity f is in the direction of displacement and if f is in the direction of the displacement is equal to zero we'll talk a little bit more about this shortly the magnetostatic fields are produced by electric currents so the electric field is always produced by electric charges but in the magnet in the magnetic fields they're produced by electric currents so we're going to talk a little bit more about these little this concepts shortly So what do we have over here? So when I said that the cross product is important, this is to show that if the current is flowing in this particular direction, then the field B is happening at a perpendicular in a different, completely different direction. Whereas in the electric field, if the if you have a force in this direction, everything is in within that. The dot product basically says that all the forces are happening in the direction of where the charge is. Whereas yours is different. So it's happening in a completely different angle and that's why the uh, the sine theta is important because in the if it's in parallel that means there's no magnetic flux happening in the direction of the current flowing it is happening 90 degrees to the current flowing similarly over here the current loop or the bar magnet and uh, and the reason what i want to talk about but related to the related to the equation over here which is basically this b dot na is equal to zero what we're trying to show you over here is that the fields will always close and they will always have if this if it's part it'll always it'll always start from a positive from a north pole and it'll end in the south pole which means it's always continuous in space now just because i've not shown them you know circulating over this piece of paper does not mean it doesn't happen in real life in real life or in a practical situation they always will close it'll always be a closed loop whether it's a magnet where there's a current coil going through a conductor and the fields are happening or flowing you know uh, perpendicular to the current flowing in that conductor or uh, or in this particular case so magnetic field lines forms closed loops and uh, the closed loops generally go from north to south magnetic fields cannot crisscross at any point in time basically if they are crisscross if you have two magnets and the path is crisscrossing then you then what happens is that at that particular instance it'll be the cumulative force acting at that very instance and uh, and that will be basically considered uh, in the calculations or uh, even in the practical situation. So uh, so they add to form a total field. So if they if by chance they crisscross, then you're just finding the total field and the direction of that field um, will be produced. You can will be calculated based on uh, uh, by summing the total uh, the total fields uh, that are that are crisscrossing at that very instance. Now, static magnetic fields are produced by moving electric charge. So, if you have a current flowing through uh, through a wire, then this is the current element. This is the length of the current element. R hat is the normal to the current element, and this might be the distance. And if you want to find the the distance um, of the or the or the magnetic field uh, flux at this particular distance from the current carrying conductor, then you have this magnetic flux is equals to mu zero permittivity of free space divided by four pi dot product of I, the current, multiplied by the length of the current, a very small length of the current, divided by the length of the the length between where you want to calculate the, the field with the with the center of the conductor. In this particular case, uh, um, this would be DL, then the center of this wire. And you're multiplying it by the normal vector R. And this is the first equation that we spoke about over here, where you have what is the magnetic flux over here. And this magnetic flux is, uh, this is where it comes from. Basically, if you had a wire and you have a current, then we're looking at the normal vector, the distance between, uh, be divided by the, so basically the further you go, the field becomes basically smaller and smaller. 
So that as you increase in distance from the current carrying element, the field becomes it becomes weaker. So it's inversely proportional to the distance, but it's directly proportional to the amount of current flowing. Um, and those are the few two, two quantities that you can uh, consider when you want to calculate the flux. So in a nutshell, the closed surface, let's put this like this. The magnetic flux through a closed surface is equal to the total coming in and the total coming out. So if I have a north and south over here, a magnetic pole, and if I just take any area, any cross-sectional area, the number of field lines coming into that area, imaginary area or real area, and the amount of field lines coming out of that area will always be equal. And as a result, the net flux will be zero. And that's what this equation is all about. Because they can always, they'll always be a pole pair. And then the amount of flux lines coming into the into that imaginary area or the closed surface area will be equal to the number of field line flux lines coming out of the area. And as a result, it will always be zero. The total will always be zero. So total in is always equal to total out. There are a few things to note about this equation that this is a scalar quantity. So if you have the magnetic flux dot the normal vector, it'll be a scalar quantity and the unit of the magnetic flux is in Weber. All right. So let's go a little bit into the uh, few characteristics or few uh, phenomena that might uh, that you might basically in um, that you might that we should consider when it comes to the magnetic field lines. Now, in terms of the in terms of the uh, differential form, we have the same thing, where we have the divergence of B, which is the del operator dot product of the magnetic flux, uh, is equals to um, zero. Even for this particular case, it will always be zero. So the magnetic flux of uh, in the de in in divergence or in the, or in the differential form is also zero. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about this equation shortly. But going back to what we discussed a little bit earlier, where if you have a current flowing through a conductor, then all the field lines will always be circulating around that around that current carrying conductor. And uh, and to find and if this is an infinite wire, the formula for an infinite wire basically is uh, mu zero divided by two pi r uh, multiplied by the current into the angle at which uh, the flux lines are, which is basically um, 90 degrees from or radially. It's not It's not, It's not. not in the z direction. It's not in the r direction. It's 90 degrees away. So it's in the phi direction. It's in a, it's, in, it's circulating around the center. And if you do a dead, uh, uh, the dot product um, for this particular type of circuitry or this type of basically phenomena, you'll have one by r into the differentiation of uh, this particular mu zero into i divided by two pi r, which is equal to zero. Now, what does all of this imply? So to basically sum it up, magnetic fields make circular loops. It has no radial or z direction dependency. So there's no z and there's no radial dependency. It only has a dependency in the phi. And if it has, since it has a dependency, since it has an effect only on the phi, but in the but it does not have any phi dependencies. So what does that mean? So basically magnetic fields are always 90 degrees from, um, from the, from, it's not even 90 degrees uh, or, or rather the, it's, 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 it's acting circular to the direction of the field basically. That's really what this uh, equation is trying to tell us. Another thing is magnetic fields has constant amplitude around a circular path. So if you have a central line over here, and if I take a flux of this particular, of the magnetic field at this particular instance, then across that particular dis that instance and the distance from the conductor, and if I go circular and measure it, it'll always be the same because the magnetic flux line from the at the same distance from the conductor will always be the same. So if I'm taking the outermost uh, line over here and I measure it, 
the magnetic flux over here or magne magnetic flux over here will be exactly the same because it is circular and it's in the same distance from the center. The divergence is equal to zero, which basically means that the, the amount of fields that is going in is equal to the number of fields coming out, which is the amount of fields that's converging is equal to the amount of fields diverging. And as a result, it will always be zero. And you call this a silus, uh, solenoidal field or a sonocidal, uh, solenoidal in nature. So in a nutshell, when you look at the Gauss's equation, when you look at Maxwell's second equation of a magnetic field, it is important to note that the because the because you'll always have a pole pair, the differential form and the integral form always equates to zero, whether you're we're calculating the magnetic flux or we're creating the dot product of the divergence of the magnetic flux. And in either case, the overall net effect is equal to zero, and it helps. Uh, and and the reason why it's zero is because there's always going to be a pole pair, and it and the number of field lines that you know that travel from north is going to be the exact same field lines that the south is going to receive. So the net the net uh, effect over an area will always be zero, and that's what's important to remember. One and number two to remember is that the magnetic flux the magnetic flux depends on a current carrying conductor, whereas in the electric field we had we just needed a electric charge. Whereas here, there's a there's a relationship between the current and the magnetic effects, and we'll deal dive more into this into equation three and four. But uh, that's what equation two is all about. And uh, until next time, thank you.